Hello. Today I find myself thinking of trees. I hope you've heard of Team Trees. They're currently trying to plant 20 million trees by 2020. Undoubtedly a noble cause. Trees have made us who we are today, and if taken care of, they will line our path into the future. You can learn a lot from trees, if you pay attention. Today, however, we're going to focus on the rather unique communication systems. For starters, trees talk a lot. To who you might ask? Well, mostly to each other. Humans are poor listeners. Then again, they don't exactly talk in the same way as you or I. One way they talk is more like most mammals. Some trees communicate by releasing chemicals into the air. A good example of this is the acacia tree. When a giraffe starts to eat from one, it releases a bitter tasting chemical known as a tannin into its leaves. Tannins are the same class of chemicals that make wine and oak taste bitter. When it does this, an accompanying chemical is released into the air that alerts nearby trees to the danger so that they can make their leaves taste bitter as well. This forces the giraffe to move a good distance upwind before eating too many of the local trees. The downside though is that this chemical is airborne and only travels downwind. On the other hand, there is a far more interesting form of tree communication. Have you ever heard of the wood wide web? It's a real hoot. It's a network some trees use to communicate. They don't use it to share tweets like humans or birds. Instead, they use it to share water, nutrients, and information with each other. Trees also send warnings about various things such as drought, disease, and insect attacks to each other so they can alter their behavior to better fit the situation. The trees have fine hair-like root tips that join with microscopic fungal filaments to form a fully functional fungal field that links them to the network. There is an interesting symbiotic relationship between the trees and the fungi. An economic exchange, if you will, a random set of biological adaptations that have occurred over time to allow both to benefit due to Darwinian evolution, if you won't. As a kind of quid pro quo, the fungi consume a fair amount of sugar that the trees make. This sugar is what fuels the fungi as they send messages and gather nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus from the soil. Then these nutrients, which the trees have trouble getting on their own, are given to them by the fungi. On a side note, this proves that fungi are really fungi. Some trees have also been found giving sugar to other trees in need, like a welfare system. I'm not going to say trees have casual conversations in a form of government. However, I'm not going to say that they don't either. All we know is that life is hard, and after millions of years of evolution, trees have evolved to help each other out rather than trying to go it alone. Humans can learn a lot from trees, but only if they're still around, which is why protecting our forests is so important. A good way to start is by checking out the Arbor Day Foundation website. Why not use the World Wide Web to help save the World Wide Web? If you want to see this topic covered in far superior quality by people way more skilled than me, feel free to use one of the links to my left. And thanks for watching.